Hey, what's going on DDO players? Axel here. This is a video for new players going over the character sheet. I know a lot of players when they start, they don't know what a lot of this stuff is and what it does. So that's the point of this video to explain everything. So let's just get started right at the top. So the character sheet, it gives you an overview of a lot of very important stats for your character. So to access the character sheet, if you're a new player, you don't know how to do that, hit the C key on your keyboard, it'll bring it right up. So we're gonna start on the stats tab, the very first tab here. Uh, this black box right here actually gives you information on what type of character you are in terms of past lives. So if you hover your mouse over it, it tells you how many past lives you have, heroic, epic, racial, or iconic. You'll see this character has one heroic past life. So this is a second life character, and that's also indicated by the number of stars in this little black box here. So we see two stars, which represents that this character is a second life character. Um, We've got our character name here, not much to say. Our, our class split, not much to say here, but that'll show up here. Again, not much to say about this stuff. Self-explanatory, list your character's race, your alignment, your gender, so uh, and your level. So this character is level 30 right now. I uh, will say a few things about alignment and gender. So first of all, gender doesn't make any difference in DDO. Uh, as you would expect, it doesn't matter. There's no stat differences. The only differences are cosmetic appearance. As far as alignment in DDO, alignment is important in many ways. So certain enhancements, may have a different effect depending on what alignment you are. Your alignment also depends, uh, will also affect what types of damage you are eligible to take. So there's certain uh, spells that might be thrown at you, for example, by enemy mobs that might only affect you if you are, for example, chaotic or lawful. So, for example, so, you, you know, a lot of players will, as default, hit a pick two true neutral to be immune to any alignment based damage. But there are certainly uh, a lot of advantages to being a certain alignment and some classes require you to be a certain alignment. For example, for Paladin, you have to be lawful good. For Monk, you have to be lawful, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's the point of alignments. They don't make a huge difference in DDO, but they do actually affect you in certain ways when it comes to um, enhancements and equi some equipment as well. All right, moving on, let's get to our base stats. So we've got six main stats in DDO, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So first thing to note, you also see, you'll see your stat here, but you also see this mod, which is your modifier. So the modifier is based on the number of ranks you have above 10. So how do we get to modifier four? Uh, every even number gives you an extra modifier, okay? Every even number over 10. So strength, we have 18, so we have eight points over 10. And for each even number, you get a modifier. So for every two points, you get a plus one modifier. So eight, you know, divided by two gives you four. That's where the four is coming from. If we were to go to a stat value of 19, we won't get any additional effects. So that's one thing that's very important in DDO to note is that you want even numbers. And this is a, this is a character that I don't play very much, by the way. So I haven't optimized this at all. Um, but these, uh, it's very important to note that odd numbers don't do anything for you. So for example, this character has 27 dexterity. So this character will have a 20, uh, will have an eight modifier, which is the actual number that affects your stats, uh, whether the dexterity of this character is 26 or 27. So you don't actually get any improvement to your character until you move to the next even number because everything in DDO is based off your, well, most everything in DDO, um, particularly when it comes to attack and damage and hit points and things are based off your modifier, not your actual stat value. So you do need to, to to take that into account. Um, make sure you're on even numbers as much as possible. So strength, what is strength in DDO? Strength is, um, in a very general sense, it is the standard attack and damage for melee weapons. Uh, it is the primary stat for certain classes. Uh, most melee classes, like Barbarian, for example, it's the main stat for Barbarian. Now, there are many ways in DDO to get attack and damage with other stats. So, for example, the Fade Arc Illusionist tree lets you get attack and damage with Charisma. Uh, the Falconry Enhancement tree lets you get attack and damage with Wisdom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's other ways to get other stat values, but uh, strength is the uh, default attack and damage and generally the easiest one to gear for on a melee um, to get strength. Usually you can get your strength higher than if say you were going with a, a different stat through another enhancement tree for your attack and damage. But there can be other advantages to say going with a, say you're a paladin, um, there's a big advantage to going um, charisma based, for example, instead of strength based uh, charisma, because other paladin abilities are based off charisma, you can get a lot of synergy if you go charisma based, for example, but if you don't have a special enhancement tree and you're playing a melee, your default attack and damage will be strength and uh, strength. So for every rank, you get an extra plus one to hit and damage, but that's the value. That's the value of strength in this game. If you're a melee, it's very important. Usually if you're not a melee, it's typically not that important. There's a couple other uh, things that strength affects, for example, like character, carrying capacity, 
uh, it can affect. But there, there's a lot of others. Not, not going to go in every single one. But in a general sense, that's what strength is in this game. So dexterity. What is dexterity? Dexterity is the primary stat for to hit and damage with range weapons. So bows and such. Uh, dexterity is also very important for certain classes, say like uh, rogue, because dexterity affects your reflex saves, which we'll get into in a little bit. So um, a lot of times dexterity is very important on classes like rogue because it increases your reflex save and really important class abilities for rogue um, evasion is uh, based off your reflex save. So dexterity can be really important for your say evasive classes. Um, and it, again, it also powers your reflex save, which we'll get into that in here in a little bit. Constitution. Constitution is the primary stat for your hit points. So constitution is very important for every character in the game. For every uh, rank of constitution, you get additional hit points. So very, very important. Constitution also powers your fortitude saves. Uh, intelligence is a very important caster stat for, for certain classes, say like wizard, their casting stats are based on intelligence. So um, the more intelligence you have on say a wizard, the more difficult it is going to be for certain enemies to resist your spells or the higher the chance that you uh, your spells do full damage to an enemy instead of half damage. So if you're a caster, like a wizard, it's gonna be your primary stat and you want as much as possible. Um, wisdom. Wisdom is the primary stat for some other caster classes like clerics, like druids, uh, just to name a few. Uh, similar to intelligence in that way. And one thing I forgot to mention about intelligence, it also powers the number of skill points you get uh, as you advance in character levels. But back to wisdom now. Uh, wisdom uh, powers your will saves, and we'll get into will saves in a little bit. Uh, more wisdom, say on a cleric, for example, is also going to give you, um, in addition to making your spells stronger, just like intelligence does for wizards, additional ranks of wisdom also give you more spell points. Uh, they also affect other classes like paladin in that way. Uh, moving on now, charisma. Charisma is the primary stat for other uh, many arcane classes, for example, like, like sorcerer, for example, like bard. Uh, it's very important. Uh, for for your main stat for that same reasons as wisdom and intelligence okay let's move down to uh, damage reduction so what is damage reduction in this game so this character as you can see has 14 slash slash bludgeon what does this mean what this means is that this character anytime they take uh, physical damage so this applies to physical damage from a enemy monster 14 of that damage is going to be reduced. So let's say someone hits you with a piercing weapon, uh, this character. And let's say the piercing attack would normally do 100 damage. It's only going to do uh, 86 damage to this character because they have 14, um, 14 DR, okay? So the more DR, the, the less like damage that's taken right off the top when you get hit. Now you'll see that also it says slash and bludgeon here. What does this mean? This These are the ways that the damage reduction can be bypassed. So for this character, they have 14 DR, which is slash and bludgeon. So if an enemy monster is doing slashing damage or bludgeoning damage, it bypasses your DR and does uh, full damage. So that example I just talked about, if that mob, instead of using a piercing weapon against you, was using a let's say a long sword and was doing slashing damage to you they would bypass your dr so when they hit you for 100 damage you would still take 100 damage now this character actually has an additional bit of dr which is six with no bypass you see the little dash here what this means is there's no way for for that damage to be bypassed so actually in this example this character if they were hit by a uh, say they took 100 damage from a, a enemy monster with a long sword they would actually take 94 damage Okay, and that's a simplification. Other things like PRR go into that, but that's just a basic, simple example just to give you an understanding of what DR does. So that's what it does. It's just uh, damage that's taken off the top. All right, let's go to the resistances next at the bottom before we get to the next column. So what are resistances? These are similar to DR, except for elemental spells that are, that are cast on your character. So we've got acid, cold, electric, fire, sonic, and this is not resistance, this is PRR and MRR, we'll get into that in a minute, but what this does is this takes that much off of the attack. So let's say, again, another example, you were hit with uh, an acid attack, right? So if the acid attack does 22, let's say the acid attack does 100 damage to you, uh, this character would only take 78 damage because they have 22 acid resistance. So it's a mountain that's taken off the top. Now again, that's also affected by MRR, but I'm just trying to give you a simple example of, of what this does. So basically the more resistance you have, the more damage taken off the top when you get hit by these elemental types. All right, so 
This can vary. Obviously, it's not the same necessarily for every element. So this character has more fire resistance. So if they're hit for 100 damage by fire spell, they're only going to take 53. All right, let's move on to PRR and MRR. So PRR and MRR. So this makes you take a percentage less damage from physical attacks. So essentially, the more PRR you have, the less damage you take from physical attacks. The more MRR you have, the less damage you take from magical attacks. And it gives you stats if you hover over it, what percentage reduction you're getting. So uh, I think it's off the screen here because I'm zoomed in, but when I hover over 98 on this character, 98 PRR, it says this rating will cause you to take 49.5% less damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. So this character will take 49.5% less damage from those attacks because of the PRR value this character has. So essentially the more PRR, the the more uh, the less damage you take from physical and the same with MR with uh, magical uh, PRR and MR are very important in DDO so especially if you're a melee you want a lot of PRR okay and you get extra PRR for wearing say example he for example heavy armor versus say like robes so yeah PRR very very good in our MRR as well very important okay moving on to the next column here we've got hit points uh, and it gives you if you if you hover over a lot of these stats it will give you more detailed information so hit points obviously the number of hit points your character has powered by many things powered by gear powered by enhancements you can get more hit points there powered by your constitution score powered by your tomes so that's very important an additional thing i want to talk about if you hover over your stats and i should have gone over this before it gives you a breakdown of where your stats are coming from so it does tell you how many tomes you have if you cover hover over this number also, it tells you a kind of a breakdown of how you're getting to, to for example, the 38, uh, the, the 38 here or the 14 modifier. So, yeah, very important to note. Um, this also tells you, if you hover over it on hit points, it tells you your healing amplification, so positive, negative, and repair. So what that does is pretty self-explanatory there. The more you have, the more damage you take, the more uh, you heal from healing spells that are cast on you, whether it's from yourself or from a party member. Uh, spell points um, again not much to say here very self-explanatory the number of spell points you have this is usually powered by your your main caster stat so wizards the more intelligence you have for every rank of extra rank of intelligence you get you're gonna have more more spell points same with uh you know like clerics with wisdom uh druids with wisdom uh, favorite souls are a little bit of a different favorite souls actually are interesting because they can be either wisdom or charisma whichever one is higher Okay, so let's go to this little purple thing here. So this gives you detailed information. I know some of this is off uh, the screen here, but it gives you more detailed information on your spell power. So this is your spell power. So spell power is kind of similar in, to melee power and uh, melee power and range power, which we'll get to here in a minute. Just basically the more spell power you have, the more damage your spells do in a sense that's what you need to know i mean you, if you're primarily a let's say fire caster you want as much fire spell power as possible the more the better it's a very important thing in ddo you want your spells to do a lot of damage okay you also on this have spell critical chance and spell critical multiplier so critical chance means the chance that your spell when it's cast will do a crit so the crit, if you get a crit, that is powered by your critical multiplier. So the higher, higher your critical chance is, the higher the chance you're going to get a critical hit, the higher your critical multiplier is, the more damage you'll do on a spell when you get a crit. So both are very important. Uh, you want to max those out as much as possible on a caster. Okay, moving down to key. Key is used to power certain monk abilities. So unless you're a monk or you're using, say, the Grandmaster of Flowers of Destiny, you don't need to worry about key. Uh, armor class is a little uh, is something that's primarily a concern for tanks. Not a lot of other classes really use armor class, but armor class in DDO is the chance for enemy mods when they hit you with a physical attack, the chance that it does nothing, it, they miss, so they miss their attack. So the higher the better. Um, with a, with AC, it's one of these things where it, it can be useful when you're leveling, but generally, especially when we're talking like in game, when, when we're talking maxing your characters. Um, even though you can get some benefit, I think, from just leveling without maxing it, to be with armor class, it's kind of a go all in or don't bother at all type of thing. If you're a tank, you can go all out for AC and get a big miss chance. But if you're a character that, if you're looking to add a little bit, it's really not going to do anything for you. So if this character has, 
say like he's playing it uh, in legendaries, let's say the in-game content. If I have 40 armor class versus having 80 armor class, it's really not going to be doing making any difference for me because the enemy mobs are going to hit anyways. So it's something that if you want to go for armor class, you really need to go all out and go for a really high armor class for it to make much of an effect. Okay, um, let's move on to saving throws. So saving throws, we have fortitude, reflex, and will. So what are these? What's the difference? So this is um, fortitude saves. This has an effect on what spells hit you that are based on a fortitude save. So there's certain spells that might um, be thrown at you that are based on a fortitude save. So finger of death is one, for example. Uh, the higher your fortitude save, the better chance that you resist those spells. So those either hit or don't hit spells. And that's what saves really are for, is they affect your chance to ignore certain spells or ignore certain tactical um, tactical moves that are made against your character. So for fortitude saves, for example, they can use four spells based on a fortitude save. So let's say, uh, like, like I just mentioned, Finger of Death is based on a fortitude save. If you have a high enough fortitude save, then your character will not be killed instantly. You can also, in that circumstance, avoid it by having a death block item. But uh, that's just one example. Probably a better example is stun. So let's say a um, enemy monster has a stunning attack and they try to stun you. The higher your fortitude save, the better chance that you will not be stunned. So fortitude saves very important again based off your constitution score, but uh, there, it's one of the more important. I mean, I think reflex is the most important save, but all saves are important. Uh, you can you can increase um, your saves in a lot of different ways through gear, through enhancements, even through some feats. So uh, yeah, uh, moving on to reflex saves. So reflex saves are very important. Uh, a lot of sp they're very very important in DDO, not just because uh, say traps are based on um, a reflex save, but many different uh, spells are based on a reflex save. So for example, fireball. If an enemy caster throws a fireball spell at you, if you have a sufficient reflex save and save against it, then that means that uh, you take half damage instead of full damage. So that's very important. Uh, certain feats like evasion I mentioned before make it so that when you make that save, instead of taking half damage, you take no damage. So reflex is a really important um, really important thing to have so that you don't take um, more damage from spells than you, you have to. So yeah, reflex save, very important based off your dexterity. Will saves, will saves mostly refer to and, and help you guard you against uh, crowd control abilities like say uh, holds and dancing balls, things like that. So the higher your will save, the uh, less of a chance you have of being danced or you know being held. So in summary, saves very important. The higher your saves are for your character, generally the less you're going to be affected by crowd control, the less you're going to take full sp full damage from spells, the less you'll be affected by, uh, say, like physical attacks that may uh, cause your character to freeze in place or fall down like trips or stuns. Okay, moving on, base attack bonus. So base attack bonus is a section of your full attack bonus. You can actually see your full attack bonus by hitting the I to bring up the inventory tab here and then hitting this little details column. So it'll be right here. So this character's is 96. So I would actually refer to that instead of your base attack bonus, because this will give you your actual attack bonus. But essentially what this means, your attack bonus, is the higher that is, the better chance you have to actually land your attack. So enemy mobs, just like you, have armor class. So for really high armor class mobs, you need a high attack bonus in order to actually hit them. Uh, to not be missing constantly. If you're seeing a lot of grazing hits on your attacks, then that means that uh, you don't have a high enough attack to beat the enemy's um, armor class. So to hit, not really important. Not Okay, it's not that it's not important, but it's not that important when you're leveling through heroics, especially if you're just playing on, say, hard or elite. And I mean, especially normal, it doesn't really matter. But where attack bonus really comes into play is when you start getting to harder content and in-game content. It's extremely important part of your DPS in in-game. And if you're at in-game, you want to pump your attack bonus as high as possible on, on a melee, okay? All right, let's go on to, we have attack bonuses and we have melee range power here. So melee and range power, or I'm sorry, attack bonuses. We have a couple metrics here. We have double strike, double shot, melee attack speed, range attack speed, and bypass deflection. 
So double strike, what does this mean? Uh, this character has a 42% double strike. That means 42% of the time when I attack, I will get an additional attack. So you want to get 100% uh, double strike if you can, which is the cap. So go to 100% double strike as close to it as you can. But in general, more double strike, the better. It's a big bonus to your DPS. Double shots, the same thing, except that applies to range attacks. So not spells, but that applies to, say, like throwing weapons, crossbows, uh, bows, longbows. Melee attack speed bonus is just how fast your character attacks. The higher this bonus, the faster your character will attack. So the more attacks you can get in per second. So another very important part, your DPS range attack speed bonus, same thing, except for ranged bypass deflection. So some mo monsters will have uh, missile deflection. So this, the higher this percentage is, it refers to how much of that deflection you can bypass and just ignore on your character. Okay, let's move on to melee and range power. So uh, melee and range power is similar to spell power except for melee and ranged attacks. So the higher it is, the more percent percent damage you do on your attacks. So melee power, very, very important. Range power, very, very important, depending on if you're a melee or a range. Um, very important stat in DDO. Get it as high as possible. But those are pretty self-explanatory stats. Just the higher this the higher that your melee power, higher your range power, the more damage you do. And it's based on a percentage. So if you have a hundred melee power, you will do 100% or twice as much damage on your character, essentially. So if you have a hundred melee power and you do an attack that's 50 damage, it will instead do hundred damage. That's a generalization. There's a lot of things that go into your uh, attack formula, but that's in general what it does. Okay. Spell resistance is an interesting thing. It's not that important in my opinion in DDO. Uh, so there are certain spells that are subject to spell resistance. So for example, uh, Autosphere of Dancing, that's subject to spell resistance. Most crowd control um, or any non-damage spell for the most part, and there might be some exceptions, but the, most of those are subject to spell resistance. So what that is, is it's an additional layer of defense. So spell resistance. So let's say um, an enemy cast uh, Sphere of Dancing on you. Spell resistance is an additional layer of defense. So now something like Autosphere of Dancing also has a will save. But if you have spell resistance and you actually have an amount that matters, you'll have an additional layer of defense. So even if, let's say, they cast that spell on you, you might have enough spell resist resistance to just ignore that spell entirely. If you don't, it'll also have to bypass your will save. So it's instead of having one layer of defense, if you care about spell resistance, you'll have two. Now the reason it's, I don't think it matters too much um, from a player perspective is that if you have a high enough will save, you know, you're, you're going to save against it anyway. So a, a lot of players don't bother for that reason. It can be very important to have uh, enough spell penetration on a caster to, as a player, to bypass the spell resistance of monsters. And I think that's where spell resistance comes more into play. But uh, for a player, I would say um, I, I really wouldn't worry about this too much on a character. And some, it's not to say it can't be effective or it can't be good to have. It certainly can be. But I don't see a lot of players that go for a spell resistance on their builds. Okay, fortification. Fortification is very important. So what fortification does is it guards against critical hits. So you just like mobs, just like you can make critical hits. So critical hits is uh, let's say, and it depends, I don't want to get too complicated here because this is a new player guide, but let's say you uh, have, I don't know, a mall and you do critical hits only on a roll of a 20. So DDO is based on a D20 system similar to pen and paper. It's obviously the game's based on pen and paper. So the way critical hits work is on a 20, you get a guaranteed critical hit and on a one, you get a guaranteed miss for any character. But uh, let's say uh, some weapons can have an 18 to 20 crit range or 19 to 20. So if it's 18 to 20, if you roll an 18, 19, or 20, you get a critical hit. But in any case, if you get a critical hit, you get a lot of extra damage, which is based on your critical multiplier. But what fortification does is it guards against those critical hits. So to summarize, to, to make it easy, the more fortification you have, the less chance that you will get critically hit yourself. So the less chances that you'll take big spike damage from an en enemy's physical attack. So fortification, if you have 100% fortification, you are on paper immune to critical hits. However, you have to take into account monsters and DDO can, some, some monsters can strip your fortification. So they might have an attack that reduces your fortification, which then allows you to be critically hit. 
So as you're leveling, you want to get to 100% fortification as soon as possible, but you may want more than that, and you will want more of that later on, especially if you're playing higher difficulties, because uh, let's say you have 150% fortification. Yes, whether you have 150 or 100, you would be immune to critical hits, but if an enemy has a fortification stripping uh, ability, they might strip that fortification from 150 down to 100. So if they might uh, take 50% of your fortification away, you'll still be immune to critical hits, whereas if you only had 100% fortification and they strip 50 of it, well, that makes brings you op makes your character open to being critically hit. So that's what fortification does, protects you from critical hits. Okay, guys, let's go on to a couple other sections here. So we have this little plus tab. Uh, this, I'm not gonna go every, over every stat here, but it does give you more detailed information on your character if you wanna check that out. I guess I could go through a few here. Some of these we already discussed. Um, I guess I could go over incorporality. So incorporality is a percent chance, another layer of defense your character can get. Corporality kind of gives you traits of a, say like a ghost or a spirit. So for this character, I have 10% incorporality. So that's a 10% chance for a enemy monster to miss me due to my incorporality. So it's another layer of defense for your character. Uh, concealment is uh, works similar to incorporality, but it's a separate bonus. So it stacks. So concealment, things like blur, displacement, those are concealment bonuses, another percent chance for enemies to miss you. Now, now you have to also take into account that enemy monsters can bypass this, just like you. So for concealment, for example, uh, if an enemy has the spell true seeing or they have the effect true seeing, then they bypass your concealment. So it doesn't matter if you have 0% concealment or 50% concealment. If an enemy has true seeing, they're going to bypass all of it. Uh, dodge is a chance that uh, your character can avoid damage. So this character has 19% dodge, so 19% chance to just ignore damage from an attack. So that means your character, you know, like sidesteps an attack, doesn't get hit. Uh, bonus to max dodge. So there is a max dodge that you have in the lower, the the generally the heavier armor you have, the uh, lower your max dodge cap is. So heavy armor has the lowest, whereas uh, say like robes have no uh, ha have a high the highest max dodge um i guess going on here uh in this bonus in particular is the bonus to your maximum dodge cap but yeah um is there anything else i want to say on this sheet i don't th think so um i guess i could talk about absorption absorption is a percentage amount of damage that you will just absorb so like sonic absorption hit hit with a sonic attack you're gonna absorb 15% of it. That's just less sonic damage you take. Uh, I think the rest of this stuff it, we've already covered or is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, let's hop over to, back to the character sheet. Um, bio, that's just a play. A lot of players actually use the biography section to uh, leave notes for certain quests, like to help them figure out where to go or how to do a certain puzzle. So be be you know be aware of that you can put whatever text you want in here. I think it's it's intended obviously for, to make a biography of yourself or your character, but you can use it to help take helpful notes in game as you play. Uh, skills I'm not gonna go over every skill here, but the skills tab on the character sheet. This is uh, backed in this is divided between passive and active. So. Active abilities are ones you have to actually trigger, so you'll want to bring them to your hotbar, and you can filter by that. So, for example, you know if you're a rogue and you want to use open lock, this is an active ability because you have to actually drag it to a hotbar and click on it to use it. Whereas the passive skills, uh, these are things that are applied to your character, kind of in the background. You don't actively use them, but say something like. Uh, Say something like, for example, the jump skill. This just makes your character jump higher, but it's not something you actually have to activate as an active attack. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, feats. Same thing. These are also broken down into active and passive. Be aware that you you, you want to look at your active feats if you're a new player. There may be some that you need to drag into a hot bar to use. So be aware of that. Also, one thing that's really helpful to note, the attack feat, you can drag this onto a hotbar and click it to toggle it on, and that will toggle on auto attack so that any enemy you have targeted, your character will automatically attack it. It's just one of these things that saves you a lot of mouse clicks. Uh, spells, you know, I'm going to say here, just a list of your spells. You do need to go to a tavern uh, or be at a, having rested at a rest shrine in order to swap spells on certain classes. Now there are other classes, classes like clerics can do that, but other classes say like sorcerer, for example, they can't freely swap spells. They actually have to use a certain item and go to a class trainer to swap spells.
but certain classes, say like uh, like clerics, are a much more flexible in that they can swap spells freely. Uh, let's see, enhancements, similar to skills and feats, you have active and passives. A lot of these you'll need to actually drag to a, to a uh, hotbar. If you don't know how to use hotbars, by the way, I'll also link below in the description a video I did which will show you how to set up your hotbars on your character, how to create additional hotbars. Yes, you can have more than one to create as many hotbars as you want. So if you want to check out how to do that, go to the video in the description below. Um, Destiny feats, these are from Epic Destiny, so these are enhancements above that you get at level 20. You don't have access to these until you hit level 20, but uh, these are essentially epic enhancements. Crafting, this refers to Kaneth crafting. It's a completely optional part of the game, but it shows your crafting levels. If you want to engage in this, uh, you can. It's in House Kondorak. You can find the Kaneth crafting hall and engage in that, but it lets you craft a lot of, uh, really do a lot of cool stuff in terms of crafting items. A lot of people use this for, uh, particularly for leveling, to get some nice leveling gear or to fit gear in certain slots where it's convenient. But okay guys, that's gonna be it for this video on the character sheet. Hope you enjoyed, uh, hope it helped you. Um, if you wanna check out you know other videos from me, I'll put a link below to a, a playlist with other guides if you wanna check those out. Hope you all enjoyed, I'll see you next time. Have a good one, take care.